All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. In his time, Giovanni Rosselli plays many different parts. He is a wrestler, a trainer, an actor, and a Catholic. We call him a Catholic, but what does that really mean? To most people, it means to have faith in Jesus or to be a member of the Roman Catholic Church. But its original meaning was to have widespread interests or influence. Giovanni Rosselli embodies both of these definitions. He is a Catholic, an active Catholic. I'm here with Giovanni Romeo Roselli. We're here at the event, uh, Wrestling Under the Stars. Hey, Giovanni. How you doing? Good to be here with you. Thanks for coming. Just want to get started with a little bit of your Catholic background. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Were your parents very religious growing up? Yeah, uh, both my parents were very religious. Uh, I was an altar boy when I was younger for a good 10 to 12 years. Uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel in White Plains, New York. We have a long family lineage there. Uh, how did you get started in, into wrestling? I was just always a big fan as a kid. I always watched it on TV when I was young. And as I got older, I loved it even more. I thought it was cool, like the entertainment and these larger than life characters. And as I started getting into fitness and working out, I was like, I, w I wonder if I could do this. What is the process to become a wrestler? Uh, initially, you just need to find a wrestling school and start there. And uh, to someone who doesn't know much about wrestling, they're like, oh, there's wrestling schools? There are tons of wrestling schools out there. Take us through a, a day, if you, if you can, of, of wrestling school. What, what transpires? What do you guys do? Depending on the size of the class, depending on the instructor, you'll go through some calisthenic exercise, you'll do some you know, warm-up drills, and then the teacher will basically have a, you know, a, a thought. It could be a move, it could be a, a drill in the ring, it could be a sequence of drills, it could be a, more of a psychology thing. It could be, you know, uh, you know, good guy versus bad guy, what would you do, how would you do it. How does your role develop? They say the best wrestlers are ones where you're an extension of your own personality. So you seem likable, so what, what is your character as a, as a wrestler? Are you one of the good guys or are you one of the bad guys? It, it really depends on the show. Uh, the last several years I've actually been one of the bad guys. Joe, who are you fighting tonight? Uh, Romeo. Romeo? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your opponent? Uh, I don't like him. <laughs> it's almost like it's fun being what you're not. And instead of the kid getting picked on, I'm the guy who's picking on the kids, so to speak. Got it. Because when I was younger, you know, I, I got picked on a little bit. So so now uh, I can kind of put myself in those bully shoes and, and, and you know, and be the bully. Did, do you feel that bullying or being bullied as a, as a kid drove you? to working out, pushed you into that area? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. So you've, you've gone from, you, you played a good guy, you're playing bad guy, you're gonna be playing bad guy tonight? Bad guy tonight. Bad guy tonight, okay. Uh, and your recent venture, you were a wrestler in a Shakespeare play as you like it. You played the, the wrestler character, Charles, I believe. Yes. How was that? How did that come about? Uh, I started uh, with this acting coach, his name is Thomas G. Waits, and uh, he's a big Shakespeare guy. So for the, this past summer, he wanted to put on a production, and I couldn't have thought of a better production than to have a Shakespeare play with a wrestler in it. 
you know, so talk about a part that was really fit for me. You know, I'm training with this great Shakespearean teacher um, and then just to play a wrestler is something very comfortable uh, for me. So it was just a great, great uh, you know, natural fit. So acting is, is a big passion of yours. You just recently completed a, a film. Tell us a little bit about that film. So, it, you know, I hate to be uh, typecasted sometimes, but obviously I get a lot of roles uh, for, for Jersey Shore type uh, characters and great, uh, great independent film called Jersey Shore Massacre, um, where kind of some Guidos and Guidettes meet up and they're getting chased around by a, by a killer. So it's horror slash comedy. It's kind of like in a scary movie type uh, tongue-in-cheek web. Uh, should be out by next year, and I'm really, uh, really looking forward to, to that coming out. Tell us a little bit about your acting background. Did the, did the wrestling sort of help that process evolve? Absolutely. I mean, the wrestling really just kind of transitioned me into acting. You know, when I was younger, as we kind of mentioned, I was a very quiet kid, too. And it's ironic how life takes you in certain directions. Right. So at first, I'm going to class as a kid, could be middle school, high school, even college, where I was deathly afraid to talk in front of people. And now, what did I, what am I turn into? I take off my shirt in front of thousands of people, and it's totally okay, you know? So, in that respect, I'm actually glad that I, I kind of broke out of that, that really fear of public speaking. Because you have the body type, and there may be a perception that, you know, hey, we want to cast this guy as the muscle guy, how do you prevent that from, from happening over and over? How do you prevent being typecasted? Well, one, one of the things I do is, you know, train with Tom G. Waits and do stuff like Shakespeare because no one's going to expect the big muscly guy to do Shakespeare. Even if I'm playing a wrestler, you know, I, I could still do Shakespeare without playing a wrestler. And I think that's where I'm really starting to grow, grow as an actor, uh, which is why I think like Shakespeare and play is, is really important for me. But at the end of the day, a lot of the stuff I get is still, you know, very physical or, or muscular type roles, you know, which is totally fine because that's what I've built and that's what I've done with my body. So I'm totally comfortable with that. There's nobody here I would ever go out with. Are you serious? What about that guy? He looks like a laundry bag full of meat. Have you ever had moments where you felt the pressure to take steroids or anything? Or has that ever come up? I know what's right and I know what's wrong. And I know that that's not something that, that is good for me, right. good for my body, and even good for my family down the line. You know, I've had to overcome many, many injuries with wrestling. I've had four major surgeries on my body uh, before the age of 30. Wow. And that's a tremendous amount of stress to put on your body. Two shoulder surgeries, one knee surgery, one arm surgery. Um, but then at the end of the day, I'm still saying to myself, I could still do it the right way. I right. could still do it without it. And I'm going to be stronger in the end. Let's talk a little bit about your, your training. You also are a personal trainer. How do you keep those guys that are that can get whatever they want? How do you rein them in? How do you be the boss to them? I try to be the example for them. Okay. I try to say, you know, this is how I live my life and look at the results that I've got. I've been a professional wrestler. I've never taken any type of, you know, steroids, anabolic, you know, performance enhancement drugs, anything like that. Everything I've done is just through hard work and discipline. So I know it can be achieved and can be attained. It can be attained, uh, you know, very cleanly. And, you know, from everything from, are you getting enough sleep every night? Um, obviously, yeah. your nutrition plays a big part. Are you getting in your consistent way? You know, it's, it's more of a health maximization, what we call it, even um, Right. It's more of a, a lifestyle as opposed to, hey, I'm going to train you today and then I'll see you next week. So you have to be almost uh, like a like a health coach, like a wellness coach as opposed to just a 
personal trainer. Now, do you put on a, a good guy, bad guy cop in that role as well? Uh, it depends. Uh, sometimes you got to be a little harder on people. Uh, I tend to be hard uh, a lot of the time, uh, which is could be my success and my uh, my downfall, so to speak, with some clients because sometimes. Uh, I'm a little too much, and I know that, but you have to know your strengths, you have to know your weaknesses. But at the end of the day, I just tell them this, and they know this. The only reason why I'm so hard on them is because I'm so passionate about what I do, and because I realize the potential that, you know, this, you know, exercise or this week or the situation or, you know, you as a client have. And so I just want to pull that out of you. I'm so passionate about it that, you know, sometimes I have to play the blood path. Where does that passion come from? What sort of things inspire you? I've always been the, a dreamer, you know? I, I was a little scrawny kid who wanted to be a pro wrestler and everybody told me I was crazy, you know? And my high school baseball coach told me that I'd never make it as a wrestler, you know? So I'm a dreamer. And once you go after a dream and you actually start to realize that there's success behind it when you put in the hard work and you put in the discipline, you feel like the world's an oyster. What part does faith play in that? I mean, every day faith plays a part in it. Before every wrestling match, I always just have a sip of holy water. And I, you know, I do the sign of the cross and I just say a couple of prayers. And that's, and that's just my own personal uh, experience of getting injured, of just trying to entertain the best I can, putting on a good show, keeping my body safe hopefully once once I take a sip of the water and you know, you know salute, salute him I just I just know that at, at the end of the day you know I'm gonna be taken care of. So what type of, of fans come out to see a wrestling match? Fans of all sorts, all shapes and sizes so to speak. I mean kids, I mean they just something about when I was a kid watching these these guys jump around and throwing and cheering and you know all this stuff uh, that they're able to see and there's a lot of adults that go crazy for it too uh, so we try to give a, a wide variety of, uh, of entertainment and to have someone from an you know older older crowd it, it, it brings it brings them back um, and as a kid you know what's not cooler than being able to cheer cheer for the uh, good guy and boo the bad guy and get all interactive. We've got a lot of kids uh, that obviously go to wrestling matches. What would you like to say to them? What, what sort of things would you like to leave them with? Well, first off, I would say, if you see me as a bad guy, just know that it's just playing a role, you know? And uh, if I'm having you boo me, it's just part of my job. And, and if you're booing me, then you're probably just having a great time. Um, and I would just tell them from personal experience, Whatever you want to do, just go after it and go after it with full heart, discipline, determination, drive. If people are telling you no, then just use it as motivation. If there's obstacles in your way, then look at them as opportunities. You, you have to keep going because every time you overcome an obstacle, you get a little stronger. You know, every time someone tells you no or every time something doesn't go your way, you're one step closer to going the right way. So just always look at it like that and you know, just dare to dream. Obviously, wrestling has its its opponents and, and people that look down upon it. What do you say to to someone who says, oh, that's just fake, phony, so they get in the ring and, and, and do their act and it's over? What do you say to somebody like that? Well, they obviously never have been, you know, in, in a ring or been having to do stuff that we do. Because like my opponent tonight, Joe Asanio, he's a former Major League Baseball pitcher. Uh, he's been training and just ask him about, he's like, you know, my training has been brutal, you know, just I didn't realize how hard this was just to do. It's 
you know, people think, you know, the type of people that you were referring to, they think, you know, it's a bunch of muscled up guys going in a ring and jumping up and down and growling and then they leave and then the show's over. Uh, but it's, it's much more than that. You know, it's very, you know, I can even use the word scientific. You know, it's, it's very analytical, you know, to, to get a reaction out of the crowd at a certain time is a skill. It's a very strong skill. And the guys that do that the best, you know, should be uh, commended. And then I'll also say that it's no different than going to a movie. You sit down, you watch a movie, there's a good guy, there's a bad guy. You like one guy, you don't like the other guy. And, you know, after a couple hours, it's over. And then you go back home and you're just like, yeah, that's a pretty good movie. Or sometimes you're like, it's not a very good movie. <laughs> uh, just like sometimes there's not uh, very good wrestling matches and there are very good wrestling matches. So, you know, from an entertainment standpoint, it's really no different. Speaking of movies, speaking of wrestling, you were in the movie uh, The Wrestler, Darren Aronofsky, Aronofsky's movie. And we saw in that movie, we saw a sort of dark side to wrestling. What was it like being in that movie? It's a great experience. You know, as a kid, I wanted to be a pro wrestler. And not only did I become, did I become a pro wrestler, I got to be a pro wrestler in a big feature film starring this major Hollywood actor who ended up winning uh, an, uh, an award. You know, it, it a tremendous experience. And, you know, yes, there was dark side. You know, it shows the dark side of wrestling. And let's be honest, there are <laughs> dark sides of wrestling. That does happen. Now, we want to make it a point as a wrestling community, as a wrestler, that that's not how everybody turns out. The explanation needs to be said, and hopefully it goes without saying, but, you know, hopefully, people will realize that, okay, that's one side of it and that's what could happen. And, uh, you know, the, the kind of tongue in cheek joke is, is that, you know, yeah, you don't want to end up like Mickey Rourke and the wrestler, you know, and you don't, uh, and I don't plan on it. So let me ask you something. Yeah. What the hell happened over here, man? You want to know what happened? Take a look around. Everybody's gone, man. This ain't nothing like it used to be. Everyone's either moved on or moved out. What's next up for you for, for acting? What's on the horizon? Uh, just keep auditioning, uh, you know, looking for some more film and TV work. Uh, I have some stuff lined up. You know, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to jinx it yet. I'm talking to some pretty, pretty heavy hitters. Maybe I'm going to do, end up doing some more stunt work. I'd love to do stunt work. I'm obviously a very physical guy. I'm comfortable with the physicality. So maybe stunt work, you know, is more uh, is more suitable for me in the next uh, next year or two as I continue to to work on my acting craft. Well, I guess it was amazing seeing you on the stage doing doing uh, the wrestler the, in the Shakespeare play. So I, yeah, you definitely can do some stunts. Yeah, I mean, and my my teacher Thomas uh, Thomas Waits would say, if you could do Shakespeare, you could do anything. And it's really true, you know, it's like you, you learn how to do a Shakespearean monologue or a play and you get sides for random TV show, you know, on, on network. It's like, it's, it's easy. The times where you've, you've gone out on some auditions and done really well and, and, and maybe came close to getting the part, very frustrating. Do you, do you find that, that wrestling and the training sort of helps balance out the waiting? I do. I, I really do because if it was all just my life depends on getting this audition and if I don't get it, I'm going to pull my hair out. The fact that, you know, after the audition's over, forget it, which you're supposed to just forget it, good or bad, and then be bad cop with, uh, you know, Joe Smith at the, uh, at the gym, you know, it's a, it's a good way to, to really kind of almost clear your mind and a good way just to not harp on things. I always say that wrestling's going to be in my heart. It was my dream as a kid to be a professional wrestler. That's the major chunk of my adult, you know, early adult life. So I'll, I'll never be able to just kind of let it go, uh, so to speak. I think I'm going to do it for, for as long as it makes me happy and as long as I feel like I'm, I can give some sort of entertainment to people. Giovanni Romeo Roselli. Thank you so much for My being pleasure. here today. 
and we're looking forward to seeing you wrestling. I'm looking forward to uh, entertaining. And when it's all said and done, all the smoke is cleared, all the dust has settled, all the blood has been shed, all the cards have been dealt, all the cliches have been spoken, etc., 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 dot, 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 Romeo will be leaving everybody screaming, whoa, whoa, whoa.